Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! This episode of Quick and Dirty was brought to you by Super Smooth. Super Smooth model lubricants are 100% synthetic, are safe for all metals and plastics, and will not promote gumming or attraction of dust and dirt. Just remember Super Smooth. It's slicker than smooth. In train grab bag number four, I unboxed and tried to run this Chicago and Albany Hudson. It's a great looking locomotive. I'd like to learn more about it, but you saw that it didn't work. And today I'm going to find out why it doesn't work and I'm going to fix it. So let's have a look. It's a great looking locomotive, but if you notice, there is a wire here. What in the world is that wire doing there? No idea. It's not a sanding valve, it shouldn't be there, but either way it is there. Also the shell wiggles quite a bit. I don't know, I can't, I don't know what's going on, but let's, I mean, it looks pretty new otherwise, but let's take a look here and yikes, it's missing screw from here. This is how the frame mounts to the shell. Not sure what the deal is. It's missing screws on both sides actually. So it's not new. Somebody's mucked around with it, that's for sure. But let's see if we can figure out what's going on. In general, I can hear a fair amount of rattling from the shell. It's because of the missing screws, but also the uh, details in, in the cab are actually kind of uh, loose too. All right, in order to get this off, we have to remove this front truck and get to this screw, which is the one that holds the front part of the boiler onto the frame. So, and it's, it's not direct. A lot of times these are through, but in this particular case, the front truck assembly is held on by this screw, which is notably behind the actual truck itself. So let's get that off of there. And we don't actually have to take off the rear screws. I showed you where the holes were, but in fact, there's no screws in there. So there's nothing to undo. And the way this works is these motors kind of, you have to kind of peel the shell around the outside of the motor. That's normal on these. It's normal on a lot of plastic frames, but um, that's, don't worry about it. You're not gonna break it in half. Just slowly kind of peel the shell off and it'll come off. There we go, just like that. No problem whatsoever. Now I can tell you for sure that this is not a standard motor that comes with these. This is not standard at all. It looks kind of the same, but it's not. This is a, a motor someone specifically bought and we'll see that there's no wires attached to it. In fact, there's one of the wires right there and the other one was the one hanging out by the driver wheels. So kind of figured out what the problem is and why this didn't work. It's no wires attached to it, so fair enough. But it's it's a neat motor. Somebody, I, I don't know how much these are. I don't even know if this company still exists. But again, I can promise you this was not the original motor that came with this. It's an upgraded unit. Let me see if I can figure out something about it. In order to get this motor out of here, you have to note that this thing and this thing are actually clips. And what you do is you kind of spread them apart and then you, you just lift them out of there. It's pretty simple, just spread and lift and that you'll be able to remove the motor. What I like to do is I like to kind of pry up on one side, maybe with a fingernail and get around to the other side and just get a flat little screwdriver in there and then lift it out. And that's all you have to do. You, then you just pull the whole motor, motor out, then don't, don't drop it, whoops. I noticed you use a 12 volt motor here. Some people would argue that it would be better to use a 24 volt motor since you can go above 12 volts with an NMRA DC setup. I usually use 24. And you can notice those two little ball things on the ends of there are the bearings. Let's take a look here. And what we have was one of these wires is gonna be connected to the drawbar for the tender. That will be the negative side or the left side or the fireman's side or whichever. The other side will be coming off of the frame and that is the right side pickup. So, and one of the wires will be for the light bulb, whereas the light bulb picks up the other from the lead weight, which will be attached to the frame. So let's see if I can get you some pictures here. So here we go. The one that comes in from the tender is, is you can, it's done here through this little rivet. And then the frame pickup will come through this wire. 
and then this one will run to the light. This is pretty typical for what I've seen from Riverasi. The tender handles the negative and the frame handles the positive. And luckily our motor is actually already color coded for us. That's perfect. The red dot marks the positive and the other one by default is negative. So just pull the wire in from the frame and, and whatever you want, however you want to attach it, attach it to the red dot and the other one here. And this is what it'll look like when you're done doing that. I decided to splice some wire in there so that I'd have a little bit more room to work and I put a red one in where the positive is and there you have it. So that's all you have to do. Just don't forget that when you put this back in, these little bead bearings have to go into these uh, little slots that are cut out for them. That's all. Just make sure you don't lose them. You can lubricate them a little bit if you want to, but just make sure that they go in here. And when you put the clips over the top of them, that will hold the motor in place. And when you get one of these in right, it makes a pretty satisfying little clicking noise and it should fit basically flush with the top of the motor mount. So let's get them in there, just sort of push them in there. It's a really nice system that River Rossi came up with here, I think. So that's all you have to do. Put those clips in and you can see that one wire that's still um, there with the uh, female connector. That again is going to the light. So everything being considered, we should be able to plop this on the track and connect the tender to it, or you can connect the left side track lead to that little tiny wire that's on the drawbar. Whatever you want to do, often might it's easier just to jam the tender on there. And that's a good way to kind of test to make sure you've got continuity there also. And with any luck, this will start to move. Now you are missing some of the weight from the front, so that may be an issue, but let's see. Okay, it is a little bit of an issue, and plus my track's probably pretty darn dirty here, so if I just sort of hold it and provide that weight for it, it'll start to run, as you can see. I think I'll have a lot better time of this if I put it on some rollers, so let's do that. Get that on here. Steam engine's always a little bit of a pain, and I never align things right to begin with, but eventually it will get on there, and we will see how this runs. So let's get this in place. Here we go. And don't forget this motor's new, so probably it doesn't have any runtime, obviously, because he never actually even put this in here. Oh, man, on top of that, I think the unit itself is actually pretty new. I think whoever bought it just didn't want the regular stock motor in there, so he bought one and changed it out, but never finished his work here. I think if I provide this with just a little bit of exterior weight, then it should be fine. And the more it's running here I, already, it's starting to loosen up, so that's pretty good. So let's just do that. Now what we do is put these back in here. We'll have to kind of uh, work the wires in a little bit and we want to make sure that this connector goes into the headlight assembly, which is in front of the weight. And again, you have to kind of peel the shell around the motor going the other direction. There we go. Let's put that back on there and I'll have to, where did these things go? Well, I'll have to rebend them just a little bit to get them back in the holes. So this is not the right place. Now we'll screw the shell back onto, at least the front part of the shell, onto the frame by putting that screw back in here and tightening that down. And then after that on, we'll go the front truck assembly. That's all we have to do. And then, yeah, I think we just want to make sure that the rear bar still swings okay. I think we're in good shape. And after that, we just have to get these, well, I had to go find screws to put in the back, the rear part of the shell to attach the rear part to the frame. So I found some, and I think we're in good shape there, and put these back into the holes. Okay, there we go. We'll couple these up. There we go. And I always wonder why the tender is a different color. I assume it's that way in real life. I don't know much about this particular road, so... It's interesting if someone knows why it's a different color. I'd really love to hear it. Let's plop around the track and see what we get.
A little bit of stiction at first. I'm not entirely sure why, but she seems to be plenty happy now. And of course, that'll make me happy and make this worthwhile. All right, that's all there is to it. Uh, I hope that helped you in some way. It was pretty quick. Well, it's supposed to be quick since it's a quick and dirty. If uh, it did help you anyway, what would actually help me a lot is if you like, comment, subscribe. That helps me with the algorithm. It helps me distribute this video to more people. Actually, it tells YouTube that people like it. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. Or if you just want to make a comment, make a comment. All right, guys. I will see you next time. Once again, thanks a bunch for watching. Take care, stay safe, and as usual, I hope you have happy model railroading. See you later.